Welcome to the Old Time Radio Westerns. I'm your host, Andrew Rines, and before we get into this episode, I wanted to do a little PSA and remind you that I put out multiple shows a week of Old Time Radio Westerns. You can check them out by going to otrwesterns.com or looking up OTR Westerns on your podcast application of choice. We are releasing over 10 episodes a week so far, about 100 a month. So definitely want you to check that out. Again, otrwesterns.com and check it out. I also wanted to invite you to check out my sister podcast site, OT Netcast, and that's N-E-T-C-A-S-T. So O-T N-E-T-C-A-S-T, Netcast, otnetcast.com. We're currently releasing mystery genre shows, and this is shows like The Shadow, Escape, Suspense, and The Whistler. And we have plans on bringing other shows to the network for you guys to listen to. So it's my non-Western old-time radio channel that I can kind of do other genres that not only I like, but hopefully you would like too. You can check us out by going to otnetcast.com or searching O-T-N-E-T-C-A-S-T on your podcast app of choice. Now let's get into this episode. This episode is going to be The Lone Ranger. Original air date is August 8th, 1938, and the title is Conspiracy for Revenge. A cloud of dust and a hearty high old silver, the Lone Ranger. grazing land of Texas made the fortunes of many early settlers, but the ranchers were unable to protect their herds from the outlaws and rustlers who roamed the new territory. It was the masked rider of the plains who first brought law and order to the frontier. Astride his great horse, Silver, he fought crime and criminals throughout the range country, and the memory of his deeds will remain as long as the memory of the early West itself. Now return with us once more to those thrilling days of yesteryear. From out of the past come the thundering hoofbeats of silver. The Lone Ranger rides again. Come on, silver! Hell knows in the heavy for rush now. There's going to be trouble. Hell, silver! It was on a Saturday evening that Tonto, the faithful Indian companion of the Lone Ranger, was sitting on the steps of the cafe in Rushville. He paid no attention to the shouts and laughter inside, but directed his gaze toward the edge of town. Finally, the sound of hoofbeats reached his ears, and Tonto's wait was ended. Mel Nugent, just released from jail, spurred his horse up the narrow street and pulled up in front of the cafe. Whoa, 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 whoa. We 
waited two years to fix that fella for what he'd done to me. I'm going to fix him good. Blast you, stand still while I'm tying you the hitch rail, can't you? Yeah. Now, if old Dan Adams is inside like I heard, he's going to get what he's got coming to him. Hey, Redskin. What's the matter? I'll show you what's the matter. Get my way, will you? Uncle, not in your way. Don't give me any of your sense. There's plenty of room for you to walk by. Well, I don't choose to walk over there. I'm walking where you're sitting. If you don't hanker after trouble, you get out of my way. Uncle, stay here. Why, you... I'll show you. You will not show me. Oh, let go of my arm. Let me go. You think now, huh? Let me go. You walk them where there room? Sure. Sure, I will. Uh, I, I was just joking. Uh, oh, my arm is most twisted off. Uh, I ain't got time to take care of you now, Injun. But I won't be forgetting this. You not want trouble. You stay away, Uncle. Uh, Hey, that's Mel Newton. He must have just got out of jail. Looks like he's hankering after trouble. Looks Maybe he's like after Dan Adams. Sure is. Dan Adams in here? Here I am. You looking for me, Newton? I am. And I reckon you savvy why. I can guess, all right. It was your fault I was sent to jail. It was you who got me locked up for two years. I did, and I'd do it again. Why, you he old... was rustling my cows, and I caught you at it. If you come back to town to be law-abiding, all well and good. But if you turn crooked again, you'll be sent back to jail pronto. You won't jail me again. Not if you stay on it. That's got nothing to do with it. You won't jail me again because you ain't going to live to have a chance. You come gunning for me, eh? I've been thinking of this day for two years. I've been planning on it when I was awake. Dreaming about it when I was sleeping. I ain't thought of nothing else day in and day out. And I'm telling you right now, it's going to give me more downright pleasure to fill you full of lead than anything I ever done before. You're welcome to try. Then fill your hands. I black child. You won't it, you fellas. I got you both covered. Stay out of this, Sheriff. What are you interfering for? There's not going to be any gunfighting in my town. But I tell you... You told me he was looking for trouble, Mel. And I've been expecting you to try something like this when you got back to town again. That blasted redskin. Well, maybe you're right, Sheriff. It won't me that started this fight anyhow. I certainly that, Dan. But I never backed up when one was offered me. And I don't aim to start backing up now. You don't have to. I'm chasing Mel out of town. You're what? You heard me. Beat it. You ain't got no right to do that. I ain't served my sentence. The law ain't got no hold on me. Look here, Mel. You got a little place up the valley away. You on home till you've cooled off. Then when you want to come to town peaceable, it'll be all right. But until you do, stay away. I'm going. But you and me ain't through, Dan. I figured as much. And I'll be watching out for you. No right in the face at all. Don't see the redskin about. Why in blazes couldn't he have minded his own business? Okay. Huh? Who called my name? Step over here. You got something I want to say to you. Yeah? I ain't never seen you before, have I? Don't reckon you have. What do you want? Anybody around can hear us? Don't see nobody. I'm Jake Dietz, foreman out to Dan Adams' place. So that's it. You're one of his men, are you? Well, I'll now, show hold you. hold on. Don't get all head up. I'll get even with your boss, and you can't stop me. <laughs> I don't aim to. Huh? Maybe you and me can get together. Meaning? Meaning that I got some scores I want to settle, too. Yeah? You recollect old Dan's girl? Sure. She got hitched up to a fella named Clayt Summers, didn't she? That's just what she did. She'd have married me if Dan hadn't butted in. <laughs> so that's it, huh? Between Dan and Clayt, the whole thing was spoiled. If it hadn't been for them, I'd be sitting pretty with a pie-in-law that owns half of the beef critters in the valley. You got something in mind? Look here. Dan used the law to fix you, didn't he? It was him and the law sent me to jail. And how'd you like to use the law to get even with him? Hey, you're getting real interested. When I heard the ruckus inside, I started thinking. Yeah? And I'll bet my boots I got a scheme that'll fix Dan for you, get rid of Clay for me, and give me a chance to court the girl again. I'm willing to listen. Get on your horse. You don't want to do too much talking in town. Right. My horse is this one here. Steady, boy. Come on. You lead the way. 
Mel, I got a notion you and me between us are going to just about have things our own way. Get up. Get along. Get up. Get up. Tonto returned to the camp he shared with the Lone Ranger and told him what had happened in town. The masked man suggested a plan, and the next day the Indian prepared to carry it out. First he rode to the Adams Ranch House. Oh, oh, paint marks. Oh. Uh, what do you want, Redskin? Huh? Tonto. Tonto wants a job. Yeah? What kind of job? You need cook. Can you cook? Uh, me heap good cook. How'd you find out as a cook I was needing? Uh, uh, Tonto here. Redskin, I ain't had a decent meal since that girl of mine got hitched up at late summers. Uh, uh, and if uh, you can uh, throw grub together so it's fit to be swallowed, you're hired. That's good. Say, where'd a redskin like you get a horse like that? On oh, that? that paint horse. Him, mine. Wouldn't hang it a sale, would you? Oh, me not sell. Didn't figure you would. If you'd been willing, I wouldn't have thought so much of you. A man with a private horse like that got something that can't be reckoned in cash. Not right. Well, there's a cook shack over there. You'll find something you'll need in it, I guess. It'll be time for grub in a couple of hours, so you'd better start hustling. Mm, me start. And if you're not ready on uh, time... Hey, boss! What's ailing you, Jake? Boss, there's been rustlers here last night. What's that? I just made a count of the cows we cut out and threw in the corrals till it was ready for shipping. Why, they're still there, ain't they? I can see them. There's a third of them gone. You sure of that? Just step over there and see for yourself if you won't take my word for it. That's just what I'll do. Come on. Hunt on up to. What are you tagging along for, Injun? Maybe Rustler leave trail. Well, if they did, a redskin ought to be able to find it all right. A redskin ain't needed. I already picked up the trail of them varmints. You did? It was my job, wasn't it? Good for you, Jake. Yeah. Have a look for yourself. Don't need a count to show there's some missing. You're right, Jake. Where are you fine trail? Just over yonder. The clients that stole the stuff opened the corral gate sometimes during the night. Heard the cows out and headed east. East? That's right. Me see track there. Yep, and so do I. Reckon whoever was here forgot about the rains we had softening up the ground. Boy, that trail's easier to read than a book. What are you going to do, boss? Do? I'm going to get my horse. Yeah? Call in the rest of the boys. We're going to follow them tracks. And if it takes us to the low-down sneaking polecats that stole my stuff, the fur is going to fly. Those of Dan's men within call were ordered to saddle their horses and follow the trail left by the cattle. Dan and Jake took the lead. They headed eastward. And less than a half an hour later, Dan announced... By thunder, the tracks are leading right to Clay's place. They are, sure enough. I can't figure it out. Man ain't any too well off, is he? But he ain't no thief. That's what folks around here said about Mel Nugent till he was caught. Yeah, but and he... I've been hearing some talk about Clay of late. Well, what kind of talk? Well, he's been heard to say he figured you ought to help him stock his range. You being his wife's pa. Mm, I never did believe in that sort of thing. A young fellow should learn to stand on his own feet. I only told you what I heard. Besides, I just remembered he's been rounding up a trail herd. Maybe he calculated to get the critters he stole away before you done anything about it. Hey, look up that coolie. There's the cows. And they're my critters. I can read the brands from here. You're going to stop and have a look at them? I don't need to. I've seen enough. Yeah? Clayton's house is just over this rise. I'm going to ask him some questions. I'd do that same if I were you. Now get up there. Get, get up. up. Go get, up. On. get up. Get up. I can't hardly believe Clayton turned wrestler. But I'm sure going to find out. Yeah. But maybe he can explain it some way. There's the house. Get along there. Uh, get along there. Get out. I don't see Clayton no one's around. He's most likely in the house. Oh, there. Whoa, whoa, whoa. Uh, you come along, Jake. The rest of you fellows wait here. Clayton's in the house, all right. That's his saddle on the porch. Come on. I'll find out what's behind this. Why, Dan. 
I wasn't looking for you over this way. Step on in. I'll do my talking right here. But why don't you come on in? What do in? you know about them critters of mine that are in the coulee just over that hill? Huh? Oh, what's the trouble? I'll tell you the trouble. I was close to 20 of my cows rustled last night, and I trailed them right on to Clate's range. No. Well, that can't be. Most likely they just strayed. Out of my corrals. You ain't saying I took them, are you? I don't know what to think. All I know is they were stolen. I found them over here. Oh, you're local if you think Clate took them. I always thought you were straight, Clate. You know darn well I am. If there's anybody else but you, I found this evidence again, I'd shoot it out first and ask questions afterwards. Oh, you don't know what you're saying. Like blazes, I don't. I tell you, I didn't steal them cows. Maybe you did, maybe you didn't. Yeah? And this time, I'm going to give you the benefit of the doubt. I don't need the benefit of nothing. But if I ever find any of my critters on your range again that can't be proved to be strays... I'm riding back with my gun loose in its holster. If you're fool enough to think I'm crooked, you can do what you like. Oh, Clay, we don't want no trouble. Well, I just got this to say. If I'm to be pestered by rustlers, there's going to be more trouble hereabouts than this range has ever seen afore. The curtain falls on the first act of our thrilling Lone Ranger drama. Before the next exciting scene, please permit us to pause for just a few moments. continue our story. When Mel Nugent returned to town after two years spent in jail for rustling Dan Adams' cattle, he challenged Dan to a gunfight in the cafe. But the fight was prevented by the sheriff. Jake Deek, who was Dan's foreman, had a grudge against Dan and also against his son-in-law, Clayt Summers. It was he that suggested to Mel that they work together for revenge. Tonto reported Nugent's arrival to the Lone Ranger, who suggested that Tonto keep an eye on the Adams Ranch. Just as Tonto was applying for a job as a cook on the ranch, Jake arrived with the news that some of Dan's cows had been stolen from the corrals. They were trailed to Clayt's Range, where Dan warned his son-in-law that if there were any more wrestling, he would take the law in his own hands. As our second act opens, we see Jake astride his horse, some distance from the Adams Ranch house. It is nearly midnight. Only the occasional stir of restless cattle breaks the night's silence. Suddenly, Jake turns in his saddle at the sound of approaching hoofs. That you, Mel? Yeah. Ooh, 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 ooh. I've been waiting for you. It's a long ride here from my place. These the cows we're going to take this time? Uh-huh. Where are we going to plane them? It'll look funny if we leave in that coulee again. <laughs> I thought there's something better. Yeah? I reckon you know Clayt's got a trail herd gathered to take across the hills to the railroad. I know about that. Well, these cows are going with it. Huh? <laughs> It'll make it look all the better. When Dan finds his cows with the trail herd, he'll figure Clayt was getting them out of the country in a hurry before they could be found. Hmm. That's a blame good notion. Come on, let's get these cows moving. We ain't got any more time than we need. Yeah. Get up there. Get up there. Get up. Come on, you critters. Get, get over there. Come get on. There. They're on their way. 
cars where we want them. Get up there. Come on, boy. They don't always ride this way in the morning. You'll find these cows going first thing. Good enough. How are we going to get these critters in the clay herd? It'll be good, it won't it? Now, just speak of it won't. There won't be more than two fellas riding night herd. Uh-huh. And we'll stop before they can hear us. When we let the cows go, they'll drift into the herd without no problem. I reckon they will. Hey there, keep moving, bless you. And this time when Dan finds Clay's got his cows, there's going to be gunplay. There'd better be. I'll see to that. It wouldn't matter much, even if there weren't. And why wouldn't it? <laughs> There'll be a plenty of witnesses to their quarreling, won't there? And if Clay should be found later on with a bullet through him, who do you think he'd be blamed for it? <laughs> Thank you, <Jesus. laughs> Come on, you critters. Step along. Clay would be out of the way, and Dan would be hung for it. And we'd be sitting pretty. All I want is to see Dan done for it. What I want is a chance to court Dan's girl. If I can get hitched up to her, I'll own both her. Dan's and Clay. When we're through here, I'm heading back to my place. Yeah. I don't want to be seen around. You can let me know how things come out. I'll do that. Come on. Let's haze these critters along. I'm anxious for this job to be done with. Come on! As soon as he made sure that the trail of the stolen cattle headed east again, he turned his horse and raced back to the ranch. Tex! Sandy! Pete! Hey, fella! Hold that boy. Whoa, whoa. whoa. Hey there, boss. Something wrong again? What do you want? Get your horses. We're riding. What's up, boss? More cows been stolen. And the tracks head for Trace Ranch again. And, and he's starting a trail herd this morning. Blast him. Maybe your critters are with his herd. We'll soon find out. You ready, fellas? Then let's go. Great figures he can steal me blind just because he married my girl. He's going to find out different. Get up, sir. Get up. Get up. Go on. In the meantime, Clayt Summers was just finishing breakfast at his home. We hear him as he speaks to his wife. Ah, that was mighty good grub, honey. Well, now I reckon I'd better be pushing along. You have to leave already, please? Shucks, I got to do my share of the work. The boys got the herd started an hour ago. I told them I'd catch up as soon as I could. How long you figure you'll be gone? Oh, the trip shouldn't take more than a week. I'm sort of glad you're going, Clayt. Huh? I don't know what got into Pa the other day, but it'll most likely be best if the two of you don't meet up again too soon. That was the darndest thing I ever heard of, saying I'd rustle his cattle. Can't hardly blame him the way things look. I wish I could figure out how them cows got in that coolie. But it's got me worried. Oh, now, honey, there ain't nothing to worry about. Dan will soon enough admit he made a mistake. Oh, well, I don't know. There wouldn't be any of the boys riding back less than something was wrong. Last you, Clay. What in blazes is wrong now? Where are they? Where's what? You savvy blamed well what I mean. Where are the cows you stole off of me last night? Have you gone plumb loco? You ought to drill the even coyote, Dan. That's what I've come to do. But I want to find them cows first. How can you say he stole your cows, Paul? I know it. Because I followed their trail to where Clay had his herd bedded down last night. You mean to say you found your cattle in my herd? No, I didn't. That's why I'm here. But Paul, what? We caught up with your herd, but they wasn't there. You must have figured that'd be the first place we'd look. Of all the doggone crazy things I ever heard tell of. I always said you was no good, Clay. Sure you did, Jake. And I'm just wondering if you ain't had a hand in this someplace. Why, you... You needn't try to put the blame on somebody else, Clay. We got you dead to rights. But I never stole... Are you skunk? I don't care if you are, Emma's Paul. You can't talk to me that way. I never was particular how I talked to Rustler. Plug him, boss. You stay out of this, Jake. Are you going to tell me where you hid them cows? I do. Do I have to gun with you? I can't tell you what I don't know. I call it, then I'll show you. Oh, don't. You wait. What? You 
It's an Indian. You ain't wanted, Redskin. You hear me. What are you doing here, Tonto? Me show you something. Get out of here. Tonto show you cattle. Huh? Don't listen to him, boss. He don't know what he's talking about. You you know where the stolen cars are? You come. Tonto show you. Maybe the Indian's local. But I aim to find out what he's got to show us before I'm accused of rustling. How come you know so much about this, Tonto? You see... Plenty quick. Come on, let's go. Boss, it's just a trick of some kind. Don't let the redskin fool you. If he's trying some trick, it'll be his last. Tonto, not trick you. I wouldn't advise it. My horse is just outside. We'll all ride together. By darn right, we will. And if it ain't proved that you had nothing to do with this fate, I'm dealing with you myself. All right, fellas, let's go. <laughs> Tonto first led the men to the place where Clayton's herd had been bedded down the night before. Then he pointed out that the tracks of the stolen cows circled the herd and continued onward, still further eastward. The men remounted and pressed forward, discovering at last that the tracks took them directly to Mel Nugent's tumble-down spread. As they drew near, coming to Melt Shack, Clayton shouted, Hey! There's Mel running away. He run out of the house, and he sees us coming. He's heading for his horse. Me get him. Get him up, pain horse. Don't let him get away, Tonto. Ah, uh, Tonto, we're open. Get him up, pain horse. Get him up. We catch him. Come, pain horse. Come, get him up there. Get away from me, Redskin. Get away. Me rope, me. Oh, Whoa, pain horse. Oh. You not get him away now. Take this rope off of me. You wait. Let me go. I'll get you for this. Tonto, oh, not afraid of that. Hang on to him, Tonto. Come, me got him. Him not get away. Let me hold him. Oh, you hey, Dan, look. Uh, Your cattle's back there in Mel's corral. That's them, all right. It can't be, boss. It just can't be. I ain't blind, Emma Jake. Jake, you double cross and rotten pole cat. You frame me for this. I, I don't know nothing about it. Mel, I sent you to jail once for rustling my cows. But this time you're going to hang. Wait. I never brung them cows here. Yeah? Jake and a masked fellow brung them. Then when I come along... That fellow roped and tied me. He really seen you fellas riding up, then he took the ropes off and beat it. Yeah, look, oh. I see it all now. The masked fellow let it slip, but your game on Jake. Yeah, blame fool, keep him out. I'll talk and I'll talk plenty. You ain't gonna get away with this. Why are you? Hold on there, Jake. We'll hear Mel out. What's this you're saying about Jake? He framed me, that's what. He got me to help him steal them cows to put in Clay's herd. Then him and the masked fellow brung them on here so as I'd be jailed. It ain't so. The I masked tell... fellow told me all about it. You ain't fooling me. Jake helped you steal the cows? He sure did. He stole them both times. He knew I was gunning for you, Dan. This way, he figured I'd be took care of. It was you double-crossed me. Huh? You brung the cows here for yourself. All that talk about a mass fella ain't nothing but a lie. Dan, it looks to me like they was both in on us. That's what it does. Last you, why couldn't keep your mouth shut? Why should I take all the blame after the trick you played on me? I'll fix He's you. He's gun. I'll be... Oh, my hand is smashed. A mass fella just shot the gun from your hand. Sheriff. What are you doing here? <laughs> I'm here because the Lone Ranger brought me. The Lone Ranger? But where? What? There him and the engine go now. What? That... Oh. Oh. What's he got to do with this? A plenty. It was him followed Jake and Mel when they stole your cows a second time, Dan. Yeah? Then when these two skunks left the cows, he rode for me and the two of us brought them on here. And it wasn't Jake double-crossed me. The masked fella just let you think that. I didn't believe him at first when he said Jake was in on it, but he told me if I did like he said, I'd hear enough to prove it. And you sure did. <laughs> it just goes to show when crooks figure they're slick enough to get away with a stunt like this, they better make sure the Lone Ranger ain't nowhere around. <laughs>
story you have just heard is a copyrighted feature of the Lone Ranger Incorporated. <laughs> This has been a presentation of otrwesterns.com, and we hope you enjoyed. Please take some time to like and rate our shows in your favorite podcast application. Follow us on Facebook by going to otrwesterns.com slash Facebook. Subscribe to our YouTube channel by going to otrwesterns.com slash YouTube. And send us an email, podcast at otrwesterns.com. You can call and leave us a voicemail, 707-986-8739. This episode is copyright under the attribution non-commercial share like copyright. For more information, go to otrwesterns.com slash copyright. Have a great day, and thanks for listening. <laughs>